ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to another edition of DIY Money. DIY Money. DIY Money. DIY Money. Do I go up at the end like that? I don't know. DIY Money. That's like a frog. Not even going to touch that who would, one. Who would? We know we should have different different people. I, you know, I don't know who. I, I can't do voices, but it would be fun to have different voices on here. The DIY money. That was my attempt at uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Yeah, really? Well, yeah, we're going to listen to DIY money now. Did that even sound like him? Not no. at all. <laughs> not, not one bit. Okay. We were doing Eddie Murphy earlier. No. The banana and the tailpipe. Who else could we get? Do you remember that? Joe Pesci. Be great. How did we do him? I don't know, but that'd be great. I can do no voices. I know, I've noticed. I'm trying to rack my brain. I feel like when I was a kid, I could do voices. Yeah. Who did I? I used to do Bart Simpson as a kid. Yeah, man. No, I got it. <laughs> I don't have it. What, was, what did he used to say? What did Bart Simpson say all the time? We have uh, got to go. <laughs> we have got to move. How did we yeah, get on we, this? We definitely have to Holy pick this up. Holy cow. Um... I'm still so trying to think. I'm here. still trying to think of a voice that I used to be able to do. I feel like I could do some voices back in the day. Uh, now I got nothing. Really? Is there Very evidence? Fishy. Anyways, let's go. Who else would you like to hear? Who else would you like to hear do the DIY money intro? Maybe we can was find that, them on. Was that uh, for me? Was that a question no, for, for me? the camera? Oh, right that, that was, Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. You I know. Wonder, oh, we, we know do, we should do. No, we do the. Uh, What's that thing, app now? App? Yeah. yeah, where you pay somebody a couple bucks to put it in. And then we put them on our YouTube. And, and then like, we put it on our YouTube. It's probably, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure there's small print, like you cannot use this for any licensing or something. Because then a company could be like, hey, Joe Pesci, tell me, here's what I want you to say. This is the greatest product in the world. And then they put it on all of their advertising. I'm sure there's some small fine print about that. Probably. All right, let's go. We got a good question today from David. Uh, it's pretty basic, but I think it's important to bring back the basic questions. And I love what he's doing. I, mm-hmm. I love I love his angle here. David, what do you got? Hello, this is David from Orem, Utah. I am currently teaching a class at a university helping entrepreneurial students learn about cash flow for their startup businesses. Um, one aspect of the class is teaching budgeting, both on a personal and business level and as a note for many of these students it's the first time they've ever done a budget so i have two questions the first is do you have any books websites even other podcasts you would suggest for these students as they're starting down this path first time learning these principles and second just any overall suggestions for the class principles you think they ought to learn places they ought to go etc Anyway, love your podcast. Uh, any direction you can give would be very much appreciated. Again, thank you. This is a great, great question. First of all, David from Orem, Utah. Where is that? I have no idea. It's in Utah. Awesome. I was in Utah recently, Bryce Canyon, Zion. Loved it. Fantastic mm-hmm. area. Um, so I- I'll let, I'm going to let Daniel touch on the business budgeting aspect since you handle our budget for our business um i'm gonna share with you first and foremost that's a layup softball question for diy money book which you can get on amazon and one of the things that i think is shorted when anybody talks about a budget and developing a budget is in my opinion the very first step before you can ever develop a budget is to know where your money goes Mm -hmm. So I have done other coursework. For example, I went through the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University, and in a lot of their examples, they talk about the first couple months being this kind of refining period of, you know, well, we tried to figure this out, and then, you know, but the next month it got better, the next month it got better. And that's kind of the same process that we talk about, except I don't think you can ever start a budget until you've tracked your expenses because if you're a person you're already spending money every day so like something already exists start tracking it then you categorize then you classify uh all of this is in in the book but i think you could take your students through steps and especially if it's over a semester you're going to have more than a month. This is brilliant, by the way. They should teach us in every university out there because kids are spending money and mm-hmm. they don't know. They're just looking at their bank statement or they're looking at their app on their phone or their Venmo. And many of them now have a Venmo card that's tied to the Venmo. And anyways, so I think that tracking the expenses, however 
they feel comfortable doing that, whether it's a spreadsheet, whether it's a, a, a notepad, whatever it may be, then you talk about actually formulating the budget, crafting the budget based on the expenses, my opinion. Now, I'm going to let you talk about how you formulated our budget over the years, and obviously that's evolved over time. And By I'm, ours, you mean the business? The business, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. ours. Why do you got to get weird? Just because people might not know. It might be their first show. That the business a budget, weird. anyways. But I am going to throw one book out that was transformational to me in my business journey, and that is, and I don't know the author, How to Swim with the Sharks Without Getting Eaten Alive. It is, in my opinion, one of the best business books out there. It will educate an individual about how to market and sell themselves or their product. Because the other thing I think you have to craft into your class, David, is that you are going to share with each of your individual classmates or your students, they're going to be in sales. I don't care what it is that they're doing. I don't care the product. I don't care the service. They're in sales. They're selling themselves. They're selling their service. They're selling their product. They have to own that. Most people do not. Own that. Learn about that. Learn how to handle rejection and how to keep pushing forward. So that book, I think, is great. It was given to me, I don't know, 25, 30 years ago. I have it on my shelf. It's amazing. It's a great book. And unfortunately, I don't know the author. Mm, whatever. What do you got, Daniel? Great title. Forgettable author. Forgettable author. That's a Is bummer. forgettable a word? Forgettable? Yeah. Okay. Probably. <laughs> oh, you got a little doubt going there. I'm pretty sure it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Can't remember right now. Yeah. That's a Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Random. <laughs> All right. So business budgeting. Business budgeting. Yeah. Uh, practically speaking, there's no significant difference between budgeting for your personal life and budgeting for your business. Uh, aside from the fact that oftentimes businesses' income can be significantly irregular. Now, if you're self-employed, you might be saying, well, my income is significantly irregular. But for the vast majority uh, of the country who are employees with a salary and they kind of know when their paychecks are coming in and how much they are after taxes and so forth... Most of their budgeting is is pretty regular. That's not always the case for business. Also, if you are starting out in creating a budget for your business, hopefully that also means that you are starting the business, not that you've been doing the business for multiple years without any budget, without any tracking. Um, I don't know how you would file taxes as a business if you've not been tracking something. Uh, but maybe that's where you are. May maybe you just kind of have a bottom line for your business and you've sort of just been tracking hey, we've either made or lost money and we report that to the IRS. If that is the case, you can actually start budgeting for your business the same way you would with uh, your household, which is to start tracking, figuring out what categories you're spending on, uh, really sitting down, uh, whether it's daily, weekly, whatever applies to your business and, and sort of reconciling those transactions, knowing where those funds are going and then figuring out if that is the most productive place for your business. However, if you are early on in your business journey, you kind of have to start, if you're setting out to start a business or something of that nature, uh, you kind of have to start out with some level of projection. So whereas we would tell an individual because they've already, or a household because they've already been making money, spending money, et cetera, and they're usually wanting to know, how do I go from spending money without a budget to spending money with a budget? If you're starting a business, you you should actually start with this projection that we say, don't do on the personal side. And that is, okay, I am going to create a business and maybe even the first couple of months it's going to have no income. Uh, but eventually we're going to project this amount of income. And we think on a, a monthly basis that it's going to require us to spend this much on rent and this much on staff and this much on supplies, et cetera. You kind of have to build those forecasts uh, as a business so that you have a metric to know whether or not you're meeting your expectations. So you do have to do a little bit of those projections, but then you should be revisiting those regularly. So intra-month, uh, at the end of the month, you should be going, are we on course? If not, do we need to uh, move some funds from one category to the other category? Does that make sense? Uh, do we want to be spending this much in this area? Did we way overshoot in this area? And you consistently have to uh, update that and not just update it for preferences, but you need to update that from a business standpoint to go, is it sensible for the bottom line? 
Mm. And so a business is a little bit different in that uh, you need to cut places that aren't helping your profit margin and expand places that are. That could be your marketing, that could be your staff, et cetera. But if it's not really uh, transferring down to the bottom line in some way, shape, or form, and I don't mean like, hey, we can really justify that fancy new espresso machine. We did that one. Uh, <laughs> it was good espresso. It was good. <laughs> But uh, you know, there's things you can justify in the business of. This definitely helps the bottom line. But you got to get really real with yourself and go, how is this translating over uh, to sales, which are then translating over to profit? And that might be a couple steps. You know, you might need to get business cards so that you can hand those out to contacts, and then you sit down in the office that you're paying rent for and have meetings with contacts, and those contacts turn into prospects, and those prospects turn into sales. But you should be able to draw a line from expenses down to profit. If you're just, you know putting whole office lunches on the credit card because it increases morale and you can't draw a line that, you know, you're getting more sales because morale's higher, then you got to think about that. A couple of things I want to address that you mentioned that I think is worth going down a little bit further. First and foremost, the academic term for what Daniel was talking about are called pro forma financial statements. So I think, David, you need to approach it from this perspective that your students are actually going to be developing pro forma financial statements. Now you can go, you know, as far as wide as you want. You can go down a capital budgeting standpoint. You can actually look at, you know, future discounted cash flows for making purchases, acquisitions, and so on and so forth. I don't think that's the route you're going to go. Probably this isn't a capital budgeting finance class, but it is the start. A pro forma gives you the understanding of again making capital budgeting decisions where you're going to allocate capital. Which brings me to my next point. What's the purpose of a business? The purpose of a business is profitability. You can disagree with me on a lot of things, but I'm here to tell you that's the primary purpose of a business. Now, if they don't do that with good morale, good product, good people, they won't be in business. So it's, yes, you want to do it, providing a good service, providing a good you know, moral, uh, uh, whatever it may be, because you want to last. But profitability is the key. And unfortunately, in America, most people who think they're small business owners they don't have a business. They have a job. They have a job that basically just mandates they get pretty much the same pay that they would have gotten on a W-2 income, working probably a lot more than they would have worked punching a clock at some other firm. So if the business is not eventually profitable, it's not a business. I would also say that that right there, that metric, your students need to know it's about three to five years to determine whether that business is really going to make it, really going to make it. I don't know the stats, but most small businesses in America are out of business within three years. And the reason for that is, is that's how long it takes to really determine. When we launch a new project here in our firm, we know that it's going to be several years before we really know, is this going to work or not? DIY money is a great example of that. We're going in to the end of year two, year three, and now we're starting to see the fruits of the labor that we did two years ago. And that took a significant capital investment. And ultimately, that capital investment came from profits on other areas of businesses that we made a capital budgeting decision should we go down this road. I will tell you, there are times we make decisions, let's try this, let's go down this road. We put the line out there. Both of us have enough experience to say, whoa, this isn't working. We don't even wait the two to three years. We cut it immediately. So that just comes with experience. That comes with, you know, kind of, uh, again, learning as you go. But I think ultimately your students have to remember profitability. Daniel and I, we will look, and he's done a fantastic job measuring these are our profit margins. Margins are, are huge that, that you want to be focused on in anybody's business because, again, if you're not watching the margins, then you're not going to be able to expand profitability. You're not going to be able to invest in other, other areas. The last thing I will say that your students need to be aware of is that in the early days of a business startup, it's going to take them probably 10 times more work than they ever expected. Grant Cardone, I'm not a huge fan, but his book 10X and his whole mantra is so very true that it takes you 10 times the more energy, the more cat, more capital, anything you think of, it takes 10 times more. And he does a very good job at relaying that. So you just have to ad adopt that going in and know that it's going to take that amount of time. 
Then you're going to crest. You're going to see success, hopefully. And everybody's going to see that and go, wow. You're going to look like an overnight success. They're not going to see the multiple years of blood, sweat, and equity it took you to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that pro forma budget that you talked about, that's as effectively uh, an educated estimate. Absolutely. Uh, to some extent. But that's an important uh, point because I think uh, on the personal household side, if you're going into buying a new house, having kids, et cetera, that's basically what you need to do with your budget as you find adjustments is create a poor form, pro forma or an educated estimate of what the budget looks like going forward. And just like a business would, as new information comes in, you tighten that up, adjust it, and figure out what it really looks like. But you shouldn't be making a big financial decision in your personal life or your business life without a forecast of what that's going to look like in the future. In the book, we talk about a beta budget, and that really is your first budget after you've tracked expenses. In a business, you don't have the luxury of just starting and tracking expenses from the beginning to determine your budget. You're going to have to work extra hard and maybe pull other businesses, other business owners to determine what are the fixed, what are the variables, what are the costs associated with this business. And you're going to have to spend a considerable amount of time to make sure that you have the capital to even start the business. David, I think it's exciting. I, I love what you're doing. I, I think we need to teach more of this. I hope the students are excited about this. Bravo for, for you and your efforts. I hope you found value in the answer to your question. If you're new to the show, all David did was send us an audio question. We used it on the show. Now David will get $25 Amazon gift card, hopefully to buy some DIY money books for that class. There you go. That would be nice. Uh, but nonetheless, remember, friends, the secret to success is pretty simple. Live on less than you make invest the rest and do so for a very long time make it a great one